Hello, Olivia here. In this video I'd like to show you some variations I've been playing with for the modified plow pose. Now the plow pose is a well-known pose, I don't know the Sanskrit name, in yoga and it's essentially a loaded neck stretch done with a straight spine and straight knees. In the stretch therapy system the modified version has a flexed spine so it distributes the stretch all the way down the spine and also flexed knees which uh, alleviates some of the stretch through the sciatic nerve. It is a loaded stretch however through the neck so if you're quite sensitive there or you've not experienced that before then you might want to do some of our other neck stretches to get mobilized through there first before you do this one. So I'm going to show you the basic um, modified plow and the variations that I've been playing with actually allow me to get some fairly individual and strong stretches through one hamstring at a time. All sorts of interesting sensations through compartments of the calf. And we'll also be adding some ankle movements that you can get some very effective stretches through parts of the foot and ankles. So the modified plow. I like to go into it in a semi-dynamic way, so I'm doing a part roll and it allows me to get my legs up and over without any effort. Throughout the whole exercise you could have the hands supporting the back of the hips if you're at all worried, um, but I'm going to put my hands on the mat. So look at the shape of my spine, it's got a nice curve all the way through and I've bent the knees to take the stretch out of the hamstrings and the sciatic nerve. And you'll notice also that my hips initially aren't anything like right up above my shoulders. So this is quite a gentle starting position. So in the regular modified plow, you can then work at moving the hips through as much as you are comfortable with. You can do one knee in, the other knee in, bring both knees in. Then you can add some side to side movements of your hips. So that's the basic modified plow and by all means have a play with that, roll out, have a rest and then come back in and you can follow along with this next part. So what I'm going to do is spread my legs apart and I'm actually on a mat with a little bit of thickness to it so that I can grab on to the edges of the mat with my feet and then I play with moving the hips away from my face, moving the hips up to my face, I can bend the knees a little bit press out through the heels because I, I'm, my variations here are designed to give you some stretch through the back of the legs but in a completely controlled way. Wriggle around through the neck. At any point you could do a contraction for the neck which would be to attempt to push the back of the head into the mat, three, two, one, and then relax a little bit more. And now we're going to do some side to side movements. I'm pressing out through one heel and letting the opposite knee bend and then go the other way and this both gives me some interesting sensations through the legs but also emphasizes one side of the neck and then the other and this time I'm going to keep one leg straight and pull the knee in towards the opposite no it's the same shoulder there actually quite tricky to do the, the whole left right cueing here when you're upside down in this position so those little side to side movements feel really nice through the back, through the neck. Okay, then bring the feet a bit closer together but not all the way together and play with emphasizing really pushing out through one heel. So my right leg is straight, I'm pressing out through the heel and I'm getting a powerful stretch all the way through the calf, across the back of the knee and up sort of midway through the hamstring and then bend that leg and do the opposite one and it's actually much tighter on that side go back to the first side press out through the heel really pull the toes back as well so of course you're winding up the whole sciatic nerve by flexing at the ankle and then do some side to side shifts of your hip in that position and the heel of that straight right leg will be following that movement and that moves the stretch around through the calf and the back of that leg. Switch to the other side. Another thing you'll feel as you do the side to side movement is the weight moves across the toe end of that left foot. Well, 
surprisingly intense through the calf and ankle on that side today for me. All right, come back to the middle, got my feet just a little bit closer together and then have a play with pressing out through both heels at the same time. So we've kept the flexion in the spine and I haven't moved my hips further through. I'm just doing a knee straightening and bending action to explore how it feels through the back of the legs. Keep breathing. Then you can do this one at a time or two at a time. I'll do it two at a time. Now I'm turning my toes to face each other and pressing out through my heels to the sides. And that's a very interesting calf back of ankle stretch. To that position, I'm adding side to side movements of my hips. Good. Okay, just to give it a little bit of a rest for the back of the legs, now I'm going to exaggeratedly point my toes and really strongly point them and move the hips a little bit further through and then a little bit further back. And that gives you all sorts of interesting sensations through the top of the foot, the front of the ankle. Might get a bit of squeaking from your mat as well. Good. Okay, and then one at a time, I'm going to work with the right foot. I'm going to do some circle movements here, as big circle movements as I can when I'm in this stretch. Feels very cool. All around the ankle, all around the lower calf, all around the front of the foot and ankle. So try a few of those. Then change to the other side. All a process of exploration. How does that feel as you do those ankle movements? Okay, now tuck the toes under again. Press out through the heels. And then lower the hips. Press up through the hips. So as you do the lowering of the hips, the flexion at the hip joint is increased, so you get more of a uh, hamstring stretch. You can add a toe point to that position. Face the toes together, face them away. Face the toes together, face them away. And just to remind you, you could be holding the hips if you want a little bit more support there. And then to complete the sequence, been here long enough, I think, do a few more full ankle rolls ankle circles and then lowering yourself super slowly you can bend the knees if that makes it easier for you one vertebrae at a time rolling out slowly 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 and I always like to finish a modified plow by just lying there feeling the whole spine in contact with the mat, rolling the head from side to side. And when you're ready, you can sit up. So give that one a go and leave some comments as to how it affects your body.